In thinking about topics that fall under this umbrella, I was kind of, you know, dumbfounded when I realized that this particular situation and this particular trade fits so well into our criteria that I just had to go out there and make a video about it. Sure, the trade was literally just a few months ago. Normally when we talk about these trade return finalized videos, it takes the form of a trade that had happened maybe a year or two years or even three years in the past. But this one, nah. It's just from a few months ago earlier this year. Because on January 31st, 2024, we had ourselves the biggest Vancouver Canucks trade pretty much since the OEL trade take place between Vancouver and the Calgary Flames. This was the Elias Lindholm Andre Kuzmenko trade. And what I wanted to do was go out there and talk about how the return is now finalized. Now, first things first, before we dive into the return, we get into the draft picks, we get into the conversation surrounding the assets, I wanted to talk about the meat and potatoes of it, the theory about it all, the fact that the Vancouver Canucks even made this trade. If you wanted to review the assets, here it is. The Calgary Flames acquired from Vancouver Andre Kuzmenko, Yoni Yermo, Hunter Brustevich, a first and a fourth in exchange for Elias Lindholm. That's five assets for the price of one. And the Vancouver Canucks got that one and ended up running with him into the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Now, I'll say this before we dive into the assets, dive into why everything is finalized now. I get it, you could say that on paper, the Vancouver Canucks gave up quite a lot. A roster player in Kuzmenko, two prospects in Yermo and Brustevic, and two picks, one of them being a first rounder, that's a lot to pay for one forward. But when you consider these assets and the value that these assets had to the Vancouver Canucks, it becomes a lot easier to stomach why this trade ended up going down the way that it did. Yoni Yermo was a pretty nothing prospect for the Vancouver Canucks, unfortunately. He didn't really progress in the ways that Canucks fans wanted him to. Hunter Brustevich was a valuable piece, I don't want to discredit him. Although there were some concerns as to whether or not his offensive game in the OHL would translate to higher levels of play. Andre Kuzmenko, of course, was in the doghouse. Rick Tockett and his system just was not working with what it is Kuzmenko tried to do on the ice. You could understand that he was kind of a necessity to add into this trade. And then you talk about the draft picks. The first round pick the Canucks gave up was the 28th overall pick. Pretty good pick, but not the best pick available. And then you had yourselves the fourth as well. All things considered, it's not necessarily like Vancouver gave up the most expensive, incredible assets on the planet to make this trade go through. They gave things up that they could afford to give up. And for Elias Lindholm to come back over to Van, he didn't have the best regular season, he was hurt here and there, and he had to take some extended time towards the end of the year to recover, but when Elias Lindholm suited up for Vancouver in the playoffs, he was good. Really, really good. And he was a part of some really clutch moments. He scored the first goal for the Vancouver Canucks in the 2024 playoffs against Nashville in Game 1. He had himself a really nice assist on the Besser goal in Game number four, and then he scored the overtime winner in game four, too. I mean, Elias Lindholm had some really incredible moments as a Vancouver Canucks center in the 2024 playoffs. And during the run, while he was getting all these points, while he was meshing well with the Canucks top guys, that's when fans were saying, hey, screw Kuzmenko, Yermo, Brustevich, and the two picks. This guy is helping us win hockey games in the playoffs, and that is ultimately what you need. You couldn't really get that out of Burstevich, Yermo in the first and the fourth and Kuzmenko right now, so this is an even trade. And I still stand by that philosophy. I still think that even though the Vancouver Canucks did not go far in the playoffs, they made it to Game 7 of the second round and then they got eliminated, even though they just had a cup of coffee and maybe a dessert or two, I still think that the trade and what the Canucks gave up in that trade was appropriate when you consider their direction and where they're going from here. Elias Lindholm left the Vancouver Canucks to go to Boston. He signed a bigger deal over there, and he'll probably be a first-line center, so good for him. But when you think about the Calgary Flames side of things, even though I'm saying the Canucks, I'm happy with what the Canucks did in this trade, there's no reason why the Calgary Flames shouldn't be satisfied as well. Because when you think about these assets, okay, let's talk about them. Andre Kuzmenko is on path to probably having a pretty good season in 2024-2025. 
He's a guy that has some good goal scoring ability, great offensive IQ, he's got good puck skills and dangling ability, and he played pretty well towards the end of the season with Jonathan Huberdeau. If this guy can revive Huberto's career in Calgary, then okay, be my guest. Let's see Kuzi get back out there on the board and produce more than he ever could have under Rick Tockett's system in Vancouver. Yoni Yermo and Hunter Brustevich, two guys that were traded over to Calgary. Brustevich, I think, is the more projectable NHL prospect, but Yoni Yermo is a guy that I still liked. Even though I recognize that he hasn't really progressed in the ways that he should have, he is still a very big, very fluid skating defenseman on the back end, and a guy who, if he's able to pan out to what he could be, could sort of be seen as like a Philip Broberg-esque kind of an offensive defenseman, a guy who could rush the puck up ice and who could do some really nice things with speed. That was kind of the name of the game for Yoni Yermo in his draft and succeeding seasons in Finland. And then you talk about the draft picks. With the 28th overall pick in the 2024 NHL draft, the initial Vancouver Canucks first round pick, the Calgary Flames selected out of the Muskegon Lumberjacks in the USHL, Matt Vey Gredin. A guy whom I'm honestly not too familiar with, but a guy who definitely is interesting as a prospect. He's an 18-year-old, 6'1", 185, left-handed right-wing player who is labeled by elite prospects as a cerebral tactician, an offensive forward, and a puck handler. Gradeen, this most previous season, had 83 points in 60 games in the USHL. That is fantastic production out of this young Russian forward. 38 goals and 45 assists. The scouting report here on Elite Prospects reads that Gradeen leverages his ability to spot lanes and create space to amplify his impact as both a shooter and passer. A quick fake opens both shooting and passing lanes, and he generally chooses the right play at the right time. He gets open between defenders to blast powerful one-timers and occasionally makes the extra pass for a tap-in. Gradeen has some pretty low-key skill, he's got some good work ethic, and even if things don't really pan out offensively, he could still very well be a middle to bottom six kind of energy winger with an offensive touch once in a while as well. Radin certainly is a prospect that is worth thinking about. It's, I think, the second time in a few years that the Calgary Flames have gone to the USHL for one of their first round prospects, the other time being Matthew Coronado. And because Coronado has been pretty good, I mean, it's a good league for the Calgary Flames and their draft picks. And then if you wanted to take a look at the other pick that the Calgary Flames received in the Lindholm trade, it was 107th overall, the New Jersey Devils' fourth round pick. Now, if you go over to that 107th overall pick, you'll actually see that the Philadelphia Flyers used it to draft Aiki Ruhunen. And of course, Wikipedia labels it out here. The pick was used by Philadelphia from New Jersey via Vancouver and Calgary. If you wanted to read here, this is what happened. The New Jersey Devils fourth round pick went to the Flyers as a result of the trade on June 29, 2024, that sent LA's fifth round pick and St. Louis sixth round picks both in 2024 150th and 177th overall to Calgary in exchange for this pick. Calgary previously acquired this pick in the Lindholm and Kuzmenko trade, and the Vancouver Canucks previously acquired this pick because of the Curtis Lazar trade with the Devils on March 3rd, 2023. So if you go over to 150 and 177, you'll find the two prospects that the Calgary Flames received in this trade. Luke Misa out of the Mississauga Steelheads. Wow, what a pick. Fantastic draft acquisition there. The brother of Michael Misa. Luke Misa is an absolute bullet on skates, and he's a really interesting prospect that's got a lot more potential than a normal fourth round pick would. Watch out for Luke Misa to eventually become something in the Calgary Flame system, because if he's anything like his brother, Michael, then there may be a lot more at stake here. Then you had yourselves the 177th overall pick. The Calgary Flames selected Eric Jamison out of the Everett Silver Tips in the WHL. Big, left-handed, overage defenseman, a guy who didn't produce too much, but who is still a really nice shutdown option, a local boy from Calgary. So nice to see the connections being put out over there. So ultimately, if you work the trade tree down, you think about the assets the Flames got, they traded away Elias Lindholm and ended up receiving Andre Kuzmenko, Yoni Yermo, Hunter Brustevich, Matt Vegradin, Luke Misa, and Eric Jamison. It's a pretty good trade, I would say, for the Calgary Flames. They got a lot of young assets, they got a lot of quality assets that can help them out now, and all for a guy that was going to leave anyway, probably, in Elias Lindholm. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this trade return being finalized. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls 99. And bye.